Hello, my boy. Hello, my boy. My boy's joining us today. He Welcome had some back. special alone time with mommy and daddy. <laughs> he's, he's just staring, he's at, staring at me. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jenny Julian Podcast, fam. Hey. We missed you, Dink fam. Uh, we are back here for another episode. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Distilled Jeans. I pronounced it wrong last time. I was saying DSTL denim, but it's Distilled. Wow, Julian. You're supposed to be on my team, Jenna. <laughs> Uh, luxury, luxury grade denim, really awesome denim, great styles, uh, starting at just 65 bucks, really awesome jeans. Right now you can get 10 bucks off your first pair by going to dstld.com slash Jenna Julian. That's distilled jeans. Guys, check it out. Awesome I love stuff. Them. Also brought to you by the wonderful and one and only MeUndies, which currently is providing a bed for Mr. Marbles Mom on top of the table. sitting in a pile of MeUndies. Uh, Does that feel good, bud? I love mm. MeUndies so much. They are so good to us, and they make such an incredible product. Their underwear is twice as soft as cotton. It's made from micro-modal fabric, and they have the dopest designs out of any underwear you can find. Right now, guys, get 20% off your first order by going to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. Thank you, MeUndies. Thank you, Distilled. Thank you, sponsors. Does that feel good? Does he it? really is like... He likes this. This is how he used to sit at my desk when I used to work at a desk. At the desk. <laughs> All day, every day, you'd sit just like this. Not with me undies, though, but just like a little t-shirt or a blanket. Just sit on my desk. He's so good when he's alone like this. Like, he, yeah. he doesn't misbehave when he's alone, period. Yeah, I'm a good boy. He just wants some alone time. You're a cute boy, huh? You're a cute little boy. Mama, you staring at me? He's staring at me for those not watching and listening. Uh, so, as promised, we wanted to talk about. Ooh, ooh, ghosts. You scared him. <laughs> I was trying to undo type in. Ghosts. Ghosts, ghosts. Let's talk about ghosts. Okay. So, we want to talk about ghosts because last time we talked about death and <laughs> we're keeping it it's light October. this month, guys. It's Halloween time. Exactly. It's completely on Seemed theme. appropriate and you guys asked for it. So, this is also your fault. So, next week, we just like, we're, we're going to get even darker and then darker. Oh, wow. I'm ready. I'm here for this. I'm here for this. All right. So, uh, what I did was uh, I went up on, on the World Wide Web and I compiled <laughs> <laughs> like a few theories. I, I figured we would kind of do the same thing that we did last time. Yeah. We go through these theories and kind of just discuss each one. I like that. Um, oh my God, he's in heaven right now. Uh, <laughs> so let's start with, well, first of all, do you want to go through any ghost stories or do you want to do that after? Because I don't have ghost stories, but I know you have a couple. Yeah, I have a couple. Um, why, don't, why don't if... Why don't we go through some of these theories and then you can bring them up okay. after? Okay. Sounds good to so, me. So, first theory is ghosts are spirits of dead people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, basically, pretty straightforward. Someone died and they are now in the world, on Earth, in the form of a ghost. Mm-hmm. And I guess this can happen for a number of reasons, right? Someone, um, like when a house is haunted with someone... Maybe something happened to them in that house, um, or at a certain location, a person died. What What is your take on that whole thing? Because I know that that's a really popular theory. That ghosts are, that spirits, ghosts are spirits of dead, dead people. people. I feel like, so I've watched a fair amount of ghost hunters and stuff like that. I feel like uh, it's people that don't pass on for whatever reason. There's some stuff that happens. And then it's also their energy. And it's bound to, like, a certain object or place. Like, you don't hear a lot of ghosts that are just, like, free roaming around the world and, you know, do whatever. I've heard of people They're saying... limited to one specific... Yeah, claiming <clears throat> that, you know, a ghost follows them some places, or but it's attached to a person, you know? Yeah. Or a place or a thing. Yeah. Um, demons, I feel like when people talk about that, those things have no rules and no fucks. Uh -huh. uh, but for ghosts, the spirits of dead people, I feel like it's their energy is like somehow latched onto something that means something to them or a person or a place or a thing. But I do, I totally buy into the idea that ghosts are spirits of dead people. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the one that you would most likely align with then. Yeah. Right off the bat. So but let's just jump into your experiences then. And what are your what is your take on what happened? 
Yeah. So I, I'd say one of the first ones ever was I was in an all girls camp called Wells College, yeah. and it was like a leadership camp for young teenage girls to go and you know cry about their feelings and learn how to be adults, yeah. sort of. Um, so it was all girls, and we stayed in the dorms. And the campus is like relatively haunted. Uh, you know, they tell you all the stories when you get there. Um, some of the stories were like. Um, parts of the dorm used to be an old stable that burned down. So at night, sometimes you can hear horses. Uh, one of the rooms also got burned down was, uh, someone that was a writer. You could hear a typewriter at night. Um, that's crazy. There's a bridge that goes across the campus. It, it was said that somebody, like some widow was waiting up on her thing and her husband was cheating on her. So she stabbed him. So like oftentimes the lights on one end of the bridge would go out when you're walking across it at night. But like only when you were walking across it, it's yeah. not like they would just flicker. Um, the weirdest one to me was so in upstate New York, where Wells College is, one of the stories was in the winter when there was like. I forget what it was, like the flu or pneumonia or something was going around and a lot of people died. And you can't bury bodies in the winter because the ground is frozen. So you can't dig them a grave. Yeah. So all these people were dying over the winter due to illness. And so they had a room where they were putting Ooh, the bodies of Jesus people. Jesus Christ, that is a lot. And they painted the door bright red yeah. um, so that they could, you know, know which room it was and not to go in it. And... Whenever they tried to paint over it or remove the paint or anything, it would come off. And the, the door was always red. That was weird. That one really just doesn't sit well with me. I don't get it. Like, they tried to remove the red paint? Yeah. And it wouldn't come off? No. And they tried to paint over it, and everything would peel off of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. Um, but, so I was there, and everybody, I was, you know, n not for or against ghosts or whatever just hadn't had any experiences with it and it was a little bit spooky like you hear all the stories um and i was staying in a dorm room with my friend that i went to the camp with at the time and it was really late and she always fell asleep like right away and i just am not like that i sort of stay up and ponder the universe I so know. i'm laying in my bed and my roommate is asleep mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i felt like the end of my bed like really sink down like someone was sitting on it and like i looked at it and you could see like an impression like it, it was, was dark but you could still see enough to well yeah it's your bedroom yeah, i know i'm it's just saying pitch was, black. okay so it wasn't completely dark so you felt it and then you looked and saw yeah the because i'm laying on my back like this yeah. and i'm looking at it and i don't know if you've ever we can get into it but if you've ever had that experience like i've had experiences like that in my life where the only thing i compare it to is seeing a ghost or feeling like you see a ghost like your body just sort of like shuts down out of pure fear like, like you can't do anything i couldn't like yell at my roommate if i wanted to i couldn't sit up and like freak out if i wanted to i was sort of paralyzed by fear at the feeling of someone sitting on my bed and then this was this part is weird but i looked up over my bed and there was a like Mountain Dew colored cross on the wi like the wall that was illuminated and like the windows were shut. Everything was off and there was a cross above my bed and I felt like someone was sitting on <laughs> the foot of my okay, bed. Hold on. Hold on. So the cross existed in the room. It was just lighting up. No, it didn't exist. It was nothing. It looked like a projection of a Mountain Dew color, like green, yellow cross above my bed. I, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense. I, and it, did it look like a physical object or a projection? No, like it, a it was just light. It was, it was just, light. yeah. It was just light. So the next morning I woke up and I was like, because eventually I fell asleep. I don't remember falling asleep at all. I just remember freaking out. And then the night goes by. I wake up the next morning. I tell my friend and I'm like, this is what happened to me. And she was like, I was awake and she saw the cross above my bed. And she just thought you were asleep and didn't say anything? Neither of us could do anything. So, But she didn't feel the person sitting on the bed? No. That was only me. Did you tell her about it? Yes. What did she say? It was freaking out, obviously. Was she hyped? Hyped as No, fun? no one was hyped. <laughs> there was nothing fun about it. Um, okay, so explain to me what you think happened. Like, 
on every single level of that situation? Um, I mean, there's no rational explanation for why there was a... Like, here's, here's the crazy... I'm going to cut you off. Sorry. Okay. What? Sorry. I know I asked you a question, then cut you right off. I just, here's the thing for me is like, I haven't had a personal ghost experience. I just haven't. It's not well, happening. to me. Maybe we ought to go and get you one. But when I hear people that I trust say that I swear this happened... Mm-hmm. It, it becomes real for me because mm-hmm. I trust like you and uh, Rome told me that one time in, you know, wherever we were, she was telling us about that ghost and she was like, I swear. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I fucking believe you. So go on. Um, there's no rational explanation for a lit up cross on the wall. None. Yeah. I mean, maybe I, I just, I can't explain. Why do you think it was a cross? Up? Like what of any object it could have been? <laughs> Do you think it was like oh, a Oh, you're satanic asking me thing? like assign some meaning to this? Yeah, like what? Well, yeah, just, no, like if you're just to. No, I don't. It wasn't satanic. The cross wasn't upside down. I honestly, the, because that campus, all of it is so steeped in that, you know, ghost history. Like, there's a lot of things that and happen. And that's well known. Yeah, it's not like you were like completely surprised, right? When you had this but I experience. also wasn't scared of it happening. I was scared in the moment while it was happening. Because you like, can't really I'm prepare not, for that. I, because I think ghosts <clears throat> are troubled spirits mm-hmm. or people that are still there. I don't... You know, hey, 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 no. That's right, ghosts. That's against the rules Dogs for this room. ghosts. It's against the rules hey, hey, for this hey. room. Um, because I don't no. think that most no. ghosts want to harm you, uh, they're just like maybe misguided or they get attached to you or they like you or maybe they don't like you. Um, I think that there's mean ghosts, but the, the, there wasn't some sort of like threatening presence about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was if just, I look it was back, present, but yeah, if wasn't. I look back on it and I had to assign some meaning to it, yeah. it felt like someone was staring at me the entire time. Cause that was one of the original reasons. I guess I forgot to say that, that I was sort of not sleeping or when I was sleeping, I wasn't sleeping well because it did, it felt like someone was staring at you in that room all the time. And that's not something that I can really explain in any other way. It's just, it feels like someone is staring staring at you while you're trying to sleep and you have your eyes closed you know you like you you jolt awake sometimes or you look around because you're like it really feels like someone is just staring at me Uh, the feeling of being watched is a very distinct feeling i've never had it with something like that but i know what you're talking about um but i think honestly if you wanted me to assign some meaning to it, it it just felt like that was somebody's room and i was in their room and they just wanted to make their presence known yeah you know yeah i mean um that's the it's interesting it's just interesting to me Mm. these experiences like as much as i really don't want to experience something because i probably would shit my pants about it it's like i kind of want to experience it like for myself so you can go places i don't want to do that. that's a booming tourist industry you stay at these old terrifying places Mm -hmm. not for me it's just like just like you know fucking skiing and shit it's not for you just nope not for me yeah i mean it's it. it is really terrifying while it's happening because it's well when you watch shows about ghosts and stuff a lot of them explain them in measurable energy forces yeah. you know ghost hunters and stuff when they they the evp is that the that's the sound i forget what the energy is the wrong and person. how they see white orbs when they take yeah. pictures and stuff because they explain it in terms of energy mm-hmm. so if you go with that idea yeah. just by being in the presence of a relatively haunted place or area you feel it you yeah. know but you can't you can measure it, I guess, if you have those tools, but even that doesn't prove anything. All you go on is just that you feel this presence, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because it's energy. Yeah. Um, another theory that um, I, we can move on to now, I guess, is one that basically... I have one more ghost story. It's not even uh, long. I just I just want to relate these <laughs> okay. two theories. Go ahead. Like, you can go to your ghost story, but like this other theory is basically like... It's similar to the... To the this last theory of it's a, a dead person's spirit, um, but it's it kind of goes alongside it. And the theory is that like, what there was a certain event that was recorded to a location in the world mm. forever, like it's recorded into the universe, mm. and so little remnants of that replay in the form of a ghost. Mm. So that's kind of similar to these. So ones you're where, seeing like the trails of the event continuing to happen in some other dimension. No, maybe. it's like, yes, but it's like, it's almost like you're watching on loop. Right. Part of, of that event that had happened at one point in, in human history. I guess my only problem with that theory is that maybe that's true for some 
like supernatural experiences, but that doesn't explain a lot of people's experiences that don't appear to be on any loop. Yeah. Like if you watch those television shows of like the if if a you know a little boy possesses a bed or something after he dies and everyone that sleeps in it they get scratched in the face and like crazy shit's happening so they leave a piece of paper on the bed with a pen and the boy writes out like this is my bed like please leave me alone where does like, where does that from what a is... TV show haunted something haunted that's scary as that fuck. that show is really scary that's, that story you just told like scared me right now well that stuff like those are real accounts of people that have had really messed up things I, I believe it but not as much as I believe it if like you told me you saw it well that's fine I I hope that I don't ever have a story like that to tell you <sighs> well you know how that resolved itself huh. is that someone a really nice woman bought the bed and agreed to just keep it in her attic by itself so that that boy could have his bed. So she's cool. It's just like a, a, a ghost upstairs. Yeah. All he wanted was his bed. Wow. And she says they, they don't have any problems. They don't see him. They don't hear him. There's nothing going on. He just he wanted his bed. He just wanted his bed. Mm -hmm. If I died and I was a ghost, that would be the one thing I wanted to. I'd just be like, yo, I'm fucking tired. Let me sleep. Yeah. He was a little boy. Dang. So And he died in the bed. No, you I died. Think, no, I think you, I, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily have to be where you died. Mm. Yeah, that's another thing I'm interested in, is like the rule book. I don't think there's a rule book. The rule book, the manual, the manual. Well, if you think of it in terms of energy, if you died and then there's some place or some person or something that has like really strong significance to you that you're really longing for or something, maybe your energy could, in theory, manifest in that place. So for me, it'd be like the kitchen. Well, yeah. <laughs> it'd be like the Julian Tornado has haunting the house. I mean, there's tons of stories of people being like, you know, my, my grandmother or my mother passed away and she used to love potato chips. And then, you know, a week after she died, there's a bunch of potato chips all over the floor that's spilled all over the floor. You know, and maybe that happens for like once or twice, but it's it's a thing. Wow. As their soul is going somewhere else. I don't know. I don't know. You want to go to the other story? Oh, I was just looking at an apartment one time and we went down into the basement and it felt so wrong. Everything down there felt terrifying. I was like, I have to get out of here. And so we started walking up the stairs. Did you say something or not? No, I was just, just down. Like, uh, the, the real estate agent was showing us the basement and I was like, mm, okay, yeah, no, I, this is totally fine, but I'm, I've seen enough. I'd like to go back upstairs. So the real estate agent walks up and we start walking up the stairs and all of a sudden we started hearing footsteps following us up these wooden stairs. Because in Boston, a lot of places had these like dirt basements. They're, they're not finished. And you heard the footsteps. Oh, my God. I started running up the stairs. And I was like, thank you. This is not the apartment for me. I'm going to get out of here. Holy shit. Yeah. It was ridiculous. You'd think, like... I mean, you'd think if a place was haunted that the spirits would at least mask themselves until a person moved in, right? Mm, not necessarily. That's not in the rule book? I, I don't think there is a rule book, <laughs> Julian. I'm just joking. Um, that's crazy. But what do you think ghosts are? I, I see. That's the thing. Like I, the story about the boy in his bed. The story about fucking, you know, people having. There's millions of stories. I know, and that's the thing. And like I, I believe that they exist. I believe that ghosts are a real thing. And I, I honestly don't think there's one theory to explain all ghosts. I think mm. some ghosts are explained by dead people's spirits and other ghosts are explained by a varying number of things. Like looking through this list of theories kind of made me realize that it's, it seems just kind of impossible that all ghosts are explained mm. by one thing. I just, I really, I like the idea that, um, dogs can see ghosts and children can see ghosts yeah. because I had a friend in high school whose nephew was doing that. He literally was playing with a guy on the stairs every single day, every day he was on the stairs and he would tell his mother every day I'm playing with so-and-so on the stairs, like a grown man. Like it happens. And I feel like kids and dogs and people whose brains aren't completely you know, decided that this is something that can't be possible, that you can't like explain a pure mind. why kids see ghosts. Yeah. They see them, you yeah. know, they'll tell you what they or look dogs. like. Yeah. Yeah. And dogs will bark at ghosts. Yeah. Wow. It's also um, a theory or 
people in the ghost world, I guess, say that if you like if you own a home and you renovate parts of it, you do run the risk of like stirring up some sort of spirit or energy by doing that. Like if you so it's basically disturbing their peace. Mm -hmm. by, okay. Yeah. I believe that. Right? Yeah. Have you ever gone down the rabbit hole of like Indian burial grounds, like Native American burial grounds? So no. I'm not trying to be offensive. It's, no, just don't just don't have a harvest festival where those ones where are the crazy. Used to live. There there are like places where you can go and like sit on things mm -hmm. and get pushed off. No. Yes. Take me there. I'll do that. No, I'll... they're not around here, babe. Where are they? <laughs> like, we can go. East Coast. Okay, let's go. <laughs> you just said you didn't want to go. I don't want to stay over at a haunted house and sleep in a haunted room, but I'll go sit on a stump and get pushed off. We, I'm sure for Halloween around here, we could find something. The, the craziest part about the East Coast, though, I feel like, is because there are so many older places, there are like well-known, established areas where you can go and have a haunted experience, or at least feel what it feels like to be in a place like that. You know? I, I, I would do that in, Other like... haunted places in L.A.? Aside from all the murder houses, there has and, to be. There yeah. has to be. We can go on a ghost bus tour. Da -da 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 ghost bus tour. Wow. Hey! <laughs> I'm so yeah. proud of myself. I'm going to be a ghost because I'm dead from that joke. <laughs> so bad i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i don't accept sorry. your apology <laughs> just kidding yeah that was that was rough that was a good dad joke though nice job <laughs> what else you got for um, your theories you can adapt it or Daps. thank you you're Jesus. welcome i'm sorry uh other theories yeah okay so we got um the next one is it's their entities not necessarily people but entities living entities from other dimensions or realities that are currently just like peeking into your world, mm. but th they're not dead. They're still they're alive. However, you want that to make any sense. But mm. if you can imagine an alternate universe, an alternate dimension, and those people are living their lives, they are living their lives. We're just seeing the like trail remnants of it. We're in seeing our like dimension. a reflection of it almost. Yeah. yeah, like that's 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 one thing that I can't say that doesn't exist. Right. With with everything it's I know, totally possible. I'd be like. You'd be stupid to say and that they that's perceive, not true. They perceive whoever they're, you know, perceiving as the ghost. So maybe these combative people, these combative ghosts, are just living their real lives, and they see you as the combative. Totally ghost. Totally possible. I lo I love that idea. Mm -hmm. I love. I think that's so intriguing because it's like the, the, the idea of a ghost, right? The idea of like a like a figure, like very faint, is such a great representation. That's an apparition. But it's such a great rep representation in my mind of like what someone from another dimension looks like to us mm -hmm. and what me we may look like to them. Like, I don't know. You can theorize and think about it for so long in your head of alternate universes and, you know, currently happening dimensions right next to you, but in a parallel, whatever. But the idea of like a physical ghost that is that. That fits into the picture really well for me. Mm. You know what I mean? That kind of just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen an apparition. I've never seen, like seen a ghost. A ghost like a, okay. You just that have I felt can it. recall. Yeah. But so take my experience, for example. Okay. If I really felt like every night I was going to bed and there was somebody sleeping in my bed and I couldn't explain that feeling to you. Like, this oh, is so God, weird, miserable, but like, dude. it feels like there's someone already sleeping in my bed. I might sit down because I can't see this person yeah. it feels like they're sitting down and staring at me yeah. but perhaps that person in another dimension is sitting on their bed you know maybe on their knees and being like what what's going on here is there a person here you know but all I can feel is the sitting motion and the staring motion yeah. in my dimension but I guess if I was that person and I felt like someone was sleeping in my bed I'd just sit there and try see, and that, figure that just, out if they're there or not that just too. makes like the most sense right it just makes the I don't most know sense if it like makes the most you're sense. sitting on your bed it's right? possible you're sitting on your bed but who's to say that that bed isn't also in another universe and it's someone else's someone bed. else's bed and you're making the indent for them and freaking them out like who's the, or watching them that's like, what I, yeah yeah, I'm just saying, like that makes a lot of sense. That, that's mm -hmm. easy to comprehend. I don't know. I just I, I like that one. No, it's possible. I, I mean, know. yeah, I don't know. It doesn't explain everything. Nothing explains. Nothing everything. explains everything that I'm aware of. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. And also in the comments, feel free to share your ghost stories because I like reading them. Yeah, and I think so does everyone. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, maybe not everyone. 
Yeah. I just, I would love to have a ghost encounter, but on my terms, I wouldn't want to piss my pants. And if I did piss my pants, I would like them to be distilled oh denim jeans. Oh my God. <laughs> because they are quite amazing oh. jeans, luxury, amazing material, really, really well built. Jenna put hers on the other day. She showed us the bot. I was wearing these earlier. I, the only reason I'm not wearing right now is because I'm hot um, and it's hot as fuck in this room, but <laughs> super comfortable. Guys, uh, Distilled has revolutionized fashion industry by making timeless luxury gray denim starting at just $65. These jeans would normally cost you hundreds of dollars. And they do it because they refuse to work with department stores and retail middlemen. There's no markup, no bullshit, just a great jean Hell yeah. at an unbelievable price. It's awesome. So just go to dstld.com slash Jenna Julian and you get $10 off your first pair and you can look through all their styles and uh, they'll ship it right to your door, which is awesome. Uh, if you don't like the fit, if you don't like the jean, they'll Send you a new pair until you're happy. Mm. Um, guys, see why, see for yourself why A-list celebrities, A-list, not like F-list, like A-list <laughs> celebrities have been spotted in magazines like Vogue and GQ wearing We're not on the list. We're jeans. on the wine list. We are on the wine list. <laughs> wine, we're we're wine list celebrities. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love that. I'm a wine list celebrity. Can I see the wine list? Even C-list celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so these jeans, um, which style are these? I'm trying to... I don't know. They're comfortable as fuck. Let me see. Yeah. Super, super, I love super mine. They're like high waisted and yeah. so cute. Yeah. These. Oh, and the packaging is nice even too. What does it say right here? What is it? Oh, design in Los Angeles. It doesn't say what style though. No. No. They're just the dope style, I guess. Guys, right now go to dstld.com slash Jenna Julian. Get 10 bucks off your first pair. Let us know how you like it. It's distilled denim. Also, this week, if I piss my pants, I would like to be wearing me undies <laughs> because it is easily the softest underwear I've ever put on These my body. These ones bot. are so cute. The ones that they just gave us, the they the look like um, camo, but it also looks like they're, ghosts. They're ghost camos. They're ghost camos. Snapchat, uh, it looks like Snapchat. Thank you, me undies. Me undies. You guys are so good to us. Um, you send us underwear every month. It's like a relationship. Yeah. And you guys can have that relationship too. You just go to meandies.com slash Jenna Julian. You get 20% off your first order and you can get the subscription where you get the new designs every single month. Uh, they focus on making the most comfortable underwear you've ever experienced. Uh, they sent me a bunch of pairs, as you can see right here. This is literally like one tenth of the this amount. This is we all have. Julian wears at this point. Yeah, you don't own a pair. Of I don't. <laughs> and if I do, like they get ruined. You've seen all my Calvin ones. Oh, they get fucked I know. Up. I'm so sorry. That was so sad. Yeah. Oh, poor Julie. Guys, for the price of two His cocktails. Underwear was just so sad before. <laughs> for the price of two cocktails, Miani's will deliver you your favorite pair of underwear right to your doorstep. Uh, it, it's it's such an awesome thing. Guys, it's proven, scientifically proven, uh, with a touch of modal in their fabric, uh, three times softer than cotton. Tight, 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 tight. Go to meandies.com slash Jenna Julian, 20% off your first order. Let us know how you like it. Tweet us pictures of your Mandy's. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. We love ya. We love ya. And we love you, Marble. Well, Marble, are you getting scared or what? Marble. Spooky. Marble, you want to go to the haunted house? Uh, all right, angels and demons. Okay. What do you think about that? Ghosts, no, ghosts, that, ghosts are that angels theory? and or demons. Okay, I totally believe that demons exist. I totally believe that. Okay. Just be, because of the the stories that I feel like I've read and seen on TV of people being like, "This was not a, a ghost. This was not, you know, what this is a they're possessing something or someone or." They're demonic in nature and they don't act like a ghost. This is like you wish it was a ghost because they just don't care. They hurt you. They'll actually scratch you. So those are the ones where you like get physically, you. physically harmed or uh, in a counter. Yeah. With. And isn't a incubus? Isn't am I saying that right? I can't. A band? I, I, no, 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 no. It's when a ghost or no, sorry, a demon rapes you. Oh, tight. I, right? Like, this is a, a real thing that exists that people claim. Is that like what that whole season of American Horror Story was? Um, which one? The one where the demon rapes the guy. 
Oh, in the hotel, uh, the drill fuck. Yeah, we didn't we didn't finish watching that season because <laughs> I it was hated so it. So bad. It was not for me. I didn't sign up for American absolute shock and gore. I it signed was up for way like too good much. television. It was way too much. We didn't finish it. So did. after that drill fuck scene, we were happens. like, "I'm sorry, we we get into this." It's too much for me, man. And it's going to take a lot to kind of bring us back onto that bandwagon. Anyway, I haven't started watching the new season either because I feel like I'm, I'm so tapped yeah. out. We can't be alone in that. Though. No, no, no. Um, That's anyways. Right. I a thousand percent believe that demons exist because of people's accounts of them and that they, they do really Here's mess up Here's what stuff. I want to know. What? If you're a person who experiences ghost rape, or at least you think you do, right? It's you, not ghost rape. Think, it's a demon. It's very think, different. You think a demon fucked you, but it's invisible, right? Like you can't point to it and be like, that's, that's the not, demon. That's not true at all. There's people that claim that they see them, Julian. Okay, so here's my question. Yeah. If a person experiences this mm-hmm. or thinks they do and they go get a rape kit, what's in the rape kit? Probably nothing. That's crazy. Though. But they have visible, a lot of these people claim that they, or they've showed that they have visible, like, scratches and bruising and things like that on them. But it's not, you can't explain it with a rape kit. I guess that, I guess, yeah. Huh? I'm, I'm just posing questions here no it's a valid question um in your mind if you were to say a demon encounter on earth with a human being looks like this what would it look like in terms of the demon in your mind like if you were just to say like i don't know i saw i saw a ghost i saw a demon what's the difference like what do you think it is well i feel like traditionally people have described demons as like combative as dark as evil like Uh they they are not just a lost person you know maybe scaring you but also people describe ghosts as some of them being very fearful and like withdrawn like they they don't want to be seen they're nervous or they're scared but i've never heard someone explain their experience with the demon as like yeah, he just sort of lurked around. Like they, they are. They are malicious. They want yes, to do harm. Yes. And okay, so my question is, if, it, um, if they, if that's a thing, like, what causes that to be a thing? Like, is it a really bad person who died? No, demons are totally different. Okay. As do I think angels are totally different. Okay. Some people think that angels are. Like, you know, your grandmother or people once they get into heaven become mm-hmm. an angel. Okay. But I think that there's another theory that angels are different altogether. Okay. And that you can't, you know, die and go to heaven and become an angel. Got an it. angel yeah. is like a high angel. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Like Michael and the, I don't know, they have names. <laughs> Michael from the office? <laughs> yes, Michael from He's the an office. Angel. Um and so people don't become demons. They're demonic forces, they're entities that is not human at all if that makes sense where do they come from negative energy i mean i don't, I don't have the answer to that i There's, know i'm just honestly you, i'm just asking you because you know more than me and you have a better idea that's all well i think if you were to believe in in angels or demons that would sort of imply that you believe that there's beings in this world or that interact with this world that don't come from this world so you can't really explain what it is it just it's a demon would you do you think demons can exist in human form? Yes. So, okay, I, that that intrigues me. Well, think of all the exorcism that that happen cross culturally, like people claiming that they're being possessed by a demon or being bothered by a demon, or th- there's accounts of people claiming that they're possessed or that someone that they love is possessed, and you hear all those. Them speaking in tongues and you know doing crazy shit. Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah, Fucking I think terrifying. it is possible for a demon to take a human form, and I don't know, even fly under the radar. That's what that's crazy to me. Like I'm wondering if I've ever met a person so miserable or such a terrible energy person who is who was consumed by a demon when I met them. Like that you would be just, crazy. I, you never know. You uh, never know, right? I mean, maybe that is a crazy idea, but I I genuinely do believe that because I've bought into the idea of demons, yeah. just because of the pure volume of people that claim that they exist, yeah. it's, you know, good enough for me. Uh, I do believe that they can possess a human form, either someone's current body, they could possess, you know, you, Julian, or they could manifest themselves as a person. Hmm. Wow. 
Crazy. Right? Yeah. I don't want to deal with the demon. Ever. Yeah, no, but that's why, you know, the whole Ouija board and stuff like that, uh, they say, like, that stuff's really messed up, uh, even if the Ouija board is just, you know, a little Mattel game or whatever it is. Yeah. But the the ritual of sort of asking spirits and <clears throat> asking people to yeah. come visit you, if you're not prepared or you're not coming with peace and you're not coming with, like, light... You are running the risk of opening a portal or or becoming a portal for demonic entities to come into your life or, you know, affect the people around you. Do you feel like that's legit? Like, I think that, if that is so legit. If you go into so a Ouija board legit. experience with the wrong energy, you could be fucking yourself? Absolutely. Because it's not the game itself. No, you the don't... game is just a medium. It's a, it's a pathway. No, but you don't even need the game. We could just be sitting here holding hands with some candles asking, you know, whoever to come visit us and talk with us. And by doing that, by opening your energy, you can that way invite Great. anybody or anything that wants to come in this room. I gotta be careful out. what I say. Well, so my friend in high school, her mom was a psychic. And literally, she had this game called the Psychic Circle, which we liked to play, which was yeah. not Ouija at all. But it was like, or maybe it wasn't the Psychic Circle. I can't remember the name of the game. But it was like you you lit certain candles. You did things in a certain way. You open it. Everything has to be like very open, very yeah. kind. Yeah. And there's really specific steps of how you do things. And then everything gets closed at the end. You're not allowed to be like, oh, my God, this is scary. Ah, and then run out of the it's room. It's like a therapy session. You ha yes, you have to close it yeah. or else you leave that open energy open. And anything that wants to come and hang out is now Welcome to just flood in. Shit. Yeah. And if I, like there's steps that you can do if you're opening, you know, your your little group and you feel like there's some sort of really awful evil energy coming in that you can close it and make sure that that energy does not have the ability to come manifest within the room. Do you know what I mean? Uh, shit. I mean, I mean that's tell like, me if I'm wrong, but this is only my experience. Yeah, there's no wrong answer here, I feel yeah. like. This is all experience-based. This, this is all, like, even for people who haven't had experiences, mm -hmm. this is my experience talking to people who have had experiences. Yeah. Uh, obviously, let us know in the comments, uh, like, your experiences or whatever, and if you agree with anything we're saying. Um, I I feel like if I, you know, even this discussion, like, I, I one thing I feel like I've learned in the, in the last few years, I think being with you is that has impacted this a lot is to be respectful of the whole, the whole universe of ghosts and anything like that because of honestly, mostly because of fear. Like I don't want to be that person who was just like scoffing at the idea of ghosts and this and that, like it's stupid. And then really I have a terrifying experience. Like mm -hmm. I don't want that. Yeah. Um, and I think that comes with like, I don't know, like, Hearing you talk about it, learning more about it, thinking about it, you know, just trying to be a little bit cerebral about well, it, and open yeah. about it. Like, I think what's helped me the most with ghosts in particular is imagine if you were a ghost. And I know I've joked about it in the past. Like, if I was a ghost, I wouldn't just watch somebody when they needed me. I'd be there all the time, like, hanging out, like, <laughs> you know, fucking just doing whatever the fuck I want. But if you were a ghost... You know, maybe you don't know what's going on. Maybe you're just as scared as the person who's seeing the ghost is. So if you come at it from that perspective, like this, this thing isn't intentionally trying to scare me. Like you can feel it out. Maybe they are. Maybe they're combative. Maybe they don't want to be around you, in which case leave them alone. Yeah. But a lot of times they're just, they just need a, a safe space to, to be a ghost. You know, exist. they just don't want people fucking with them. And mm. I feel like I can respect that. I can too. You know, because if you were, a ghost and you're like this this right here this is my elliptical and if anyone comes near it i will kick you yeah wouldn't you just be like all right dude this is yours man i'm gonna wheel this into the garage and just you do you mr ghost yeah what well, or know, mrs ghost what's so or bad about that i don't ghost. think that there's anything wrong yeah with that yeah maybe that's just me. um one, one, I have a long theory that I found. I can read it. But the, the theory before that is basically just ghosts are pro, pro, uh, projections of the person seeing them. Mm, wait, like, what does that mean? Like, if I have issues with something, like, um, I don't know. Like, I'm basically projecting the ghost into my own reality because of my own 
experiences of being the only the only argument i have against that is that it wouldn't explain multiple sightings by multiple people of the same apparition there you go you know unless they're projecting the same thing but that's unlikely no like the those houses the big you know plantation houses where like yeah we see a a little girl or a woman in, in the same outfit and they can all describe her the same way you know what i mean yeah um, I, don't think, I don't think that that's some conspiracy. I'm, I'm that. I think that people that one, really see the same ghost. Totally. I don't buy into that one. Yeah. Uh, so let's end on this one. This is kind of a complex one. It's called The Mask okay. of Reason, Quantum Theory of Ghosts okay. uh, by down. Professor Max Bruin, PhD. I'm down. Uh, and he basically says, I'll read it a little bit. Uh, ghosts are created when the observers of emotion, emotions create a semi-permanent indentation into the quantum tapestry of the universe. Like the scent of a burned toast that remains long after the offending bread is discarded, ghosts are impressions of emotions that remain long after the cause has been resolved. Ghosts, therefore, are formed, not the dead. uh, Formed not from the dead, um, but from the living and their interactions with the world around them. The recording of events with within the subatomic weave give, gives rise to an after image and depending on the intensity of the emotion and permeability of the quantum state different types of ghosts can be created uh negative emotions are many times more likely to cause these effects the reason for this is currently unknown though it may have to do with the quantum spin of the universe what are you thinking of this like as i i'm not buying it okay. i mean maybe that could offer because this is long and very yeah that could offer some logical explanation as to why all of a sudden when you live in your house for 10 years and you start seeing ghosts yeah maybe fine but that doesn't explain for the millions of people that have seen something like a door slam or you know a chair move or for me personally a bed moving and someone sitting on it that doesn't explain the physicality of some of these supernatural experiences yes it might explain your maybe it maybe in a sense it does but it doesn't fully explain it no that does not explain why a door slams by itself I don't know. You didn't perceive the door slamming. You honestly, I I wouldn't count that out completely. What? I wouldn't say that that's completely uh, uh, unlikely. Like, who knows? Like, who knows if you if if ghosts are really just perception? It's possible. Anything's possible. You know what I mean? I'm like, no matter how real that. it feels. Like right now, if that door shut, right, and I'm like, okay, that door shut. I was here. I saw it. I heard it. I felt the wind. You did too. But then, what if it's like? If a tree falls in the forest, does it fall? Like everyone else in the entire world, we could tell that story to, but maybe it really didn't happen. And maybe we really both just were in the same energy at the same time and perceived that it happened in the most real, visceral sense that That's we possible. could ever. That's possible. But my only problem with that is that you have all these people all over the world that, you know, when you say you hear a story from me or you hear it from Rome and all of a sudden that becomes real, like, I haven't heard one person that's told me some mumbo jumbo ghost story. Everyone that's had an experience can tell you and swear to you up and down how real it was and how everything actually happened and that it's not a perception. Why yeah. Why does it happen to a lot of people I'm, cross-culturally all around the world? All I'm saying, I'm not, I, I don't agree with this theory. All I'm saying is as devil's advocate it's is that it's, it's definitely possible, yeah. especially if you think about like as much as you want to rely on your own experience, maybe just maybe your experience is, per, is perceived. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's not real. Mm-hmm. It's just a thought. It's a thought that I'd like to not just count out because like, fuck it. Okay. I just think it's interesting to entertain. That's all. But I'd buy into the parallel universes sort uh-huh. of I would idea too. and I'd buy into angels and demons and I buy into, uh, people like ghosts After are dead, are dead yeah, people. I buy into all those two equally and kind of in their own ways. I don't buy into things on a loop and I don't buy into it's your perception. Hmm. What do you th- what do you think hell is? Is that a different podcast? We already talked about that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Last that's one. right. That's right. We already yeah. Avicii. <laughs> that's right. Fuck. Wow. Um It's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I don't know. I just well, I mean, this makes you, me think a lot more about yeah. the last podcast now that we talked well, about Well, you ghosts. know what purgatory is, right? Yeah. In, in theory, yeah, it's where theory, you go yeah. before you go to Reach heaven your final or destination. hell. Or yeah. Or your next destination. So what if earth in your spirit form is purgatory? 
And I'm currently in purgatory? No. When you're a ghost. Oh, oh, got it, got it. So they haven't moved on yet. Right. The ghosts haven't moved on. So that's that's your purgatory and, you know, whatever business or energy you need to let go of, as soon as you do, you reach your next destination. Yeah. Which would explain why some ghosts have existed in some places for years and years and years and years, like hundreds of years, and people claim to see the same thing happening. Maybe because that person or energy hasn't has still refused to let go and they're they're in purgatory or their perception of time in purgatory is a lot different than it is do you know what i'm saying like if a ghost exists for a hundred years on earth maybe for them that's like five minutes yeah totally relativity you know? of time yeah. yeah um i forgot what i was just gonna say shit <laughs> um something about purgatory and ghosts never mind i don't know i lost it yeah, the thought of the thought of uh, your world being another being's purgatory—that's kind of trippy. Well, because I mean, that, that means idea... you're currently experiencing what, un, like, what a person is living in or existing in after they've died. Yeah, right. That means we, we are in heaven. We are in hell. We are in a place where dead beings exist. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they died in a different universe and the earth is their purgatory. Like they didn't even come from earth. They came from somewhere else. Mm. And then they just ended up on earth as purgatory. Mm. That's all crazy to me. But I do think that they're real. I feel like people that don't that deny any sort of supernatural thing happening on earth, that deny everything. I'm like it's it the same on, people dude. who are like you humans are the only existing beings, right? Yeah. And I apologize on the last podcast. People were very mad at me and I've said I'm I'm so sorry I'm I've chose sort of the wrong words. But Why you, were they mad at you? Because I said atheists who believe that the human beings are the end all be all. I should have just said people, people who believe it really had nothing to do with atheism. No need so to I, take shots at atheists, I, I, Jenna. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> Sometimes you're just sitting here talking. I don't, yeah. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. I did not mean to offend anyone. Guys, relax, okay? She didn't mean it. But I, I again, along the ideas, of, <clears throat> it, it does bother me when people are like, yeah, none of it is real. All of it's fake. I'm like, but there's there's plenty of things that you can't explain. Yeah. And, and honestly, no one can explain. For sure. And I, I'll maybe be, just maybe just say, maybe I don't believe in ghosts, but there are things that people can't explain. Or like, I don't believe in ghosts because I haven't been given reason to believe in ghosts. That's not fine. That's not to say I that's definitely fine. violently want to say they don't exist. Yeah. Violently. Nothing exists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I wasn't, I wasn't all the way there, but I was, I was definitely in the doubter party before. That's kind of totally cool, you. though. And I'm, you know, I always thought it was like, it, like, yeah, okay, a grown adult talking about a ghost story, get a load of this, like, really. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, it's, it's really not something, I think that's something that I've kind of, uh, it's a, it's a belief that I've matured into in mm -hmm. a way. Like, I've, I've learned to kind of keep my mind open in this sense when I really felt like it didn't need to be open, mm -hmm. you know? But that's why I find it interesting. I also feel like so many people now, like it is the majority, I feel like, of people now who believe in ghosts. Of people. The majority of people now believe in ghosts. Like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just like, I guess like on Reddit and stuff, like, you know, when you, you're like, you're amongst other people and their opinions, and mm -hmm. then you get to kind of get a gist of like what the majority feels and mm -hmm. what they, the min minority feels like for me, I always felt like the minority was the people who believe in ghosts. And now I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people believe. Well, in ghosts. that could also have to do something with Reddit's changing demographic and that there's a lot of young people on Reddit. And I've said this for forever about millennials and young kids. Now people that are on the internet, the people that you see on Twitter, the people that are consuming online media, yeah. the, because of their exposure to the internet from such a young age, they just know things, yeah. Th things like aliens, things like ghosts, things yeah. like conspiracy theories, he a healthy skepticism of authority or things like that. They, they just know things and it's incredible to me like yeah. you know all it takes is one or two pieces of evidence and they don't they don't have some life-changing shift of thought in their mid-40s like they they just like oh this is a thing that exists cool all right i'm gonna run with that i really think that you might see that because of the younger demographic on reddit now and because they just know things yeah. and they're like yeah totally why the fuck not uh -huh. instead of that like i don't know it still doesn't fit into my worldview, so I, I don't agree. really believe it. They're I just agree. like, yeah, totally. Of course, I, I, right? that's totally possible. I think that's one of the most in, important characteristics of a lot of millennials. Definitely. They're open to anything. 
and they're and they're they're aware of the fact that they are exposed to a lot of information that people who are closed off to technology and a lot of things like that are not exposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, kids and their technology, like you well, know, they that have access saying. to like, so much access, information. They have literally everything at their fin- fingertips, it's and, and, easier. They, and they take advantage of it too. Yeah, it's easier for them to be like, "This is possible," because I've seen plenty of things that support it, that deny it, that whatever. Yeah. But you know what? My opinion is. It's a thing yeah. that may or may not exist, yeah. but that's why they can make such funny jokes, man, because they're just aware of things. Totally. Hyper awareness. Hyper diaper. Hyper diaper. Good way to end the podcast. But anyways, please write us some ghost stories in yeah. the comments because yeah, that'd we'd be love really to fun to stories. read. And um, also tell us what you swear on that it's true. So we what does that mean? It. Like, I-, I swear on my dog. <laughs> what does that mean? Like when you swear on something, you're like, oh, I Why? swear. Why? What does that have to do with anything? So I can believe them. <laughs> okay, John. All right. Like if I'm like, uh, I swear on Peach this happened. It happened. I'm not going to swear on Peach if it didn't happen. So just like swear on something for me, please. Okay, you really don't have to do that. You please can just tell us your ghost stories. Unsubscribe if you don't swear on anything, please. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out for another spooky podcast. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. And um, I don't know. I'm just I'm a I'm a believer of a lot of things. I'm open to a lot of things. Yeah. So if, if you're healthy skepticism of everything, feel free to chime in. Healthy too. skepticism. I like that. I'm gonna yeah. get that tattooed on my forehead now. Uh, <laughs> Guys, if you want, uh, if you want to send us suggestions on the next spooky podcast, I say we keep, keep it spooky for yeah. all of October. Yeah, dying um, and ghosts. Dying what do we ghosts. got next? We week, also though? need to make sure we do part twos of both of these. I think at some point, this and the last weeks. I feel like there's more. Yeah, well, we, we although we talked in general about ghosts, maybe we could do a podcast that was just specifically ghost stories. Yes, or we could maybe have a guest on with a lot of good ghost stories, something like that. Totally. Um, but yeah, let us know suggestions for next week's podcast. Uh, we will see you guys next week for another one. Yeah. Check out the sponsors in the description below. We uh, appreciate you guys being here. We love you, Ding Fam. Love you, Ding Fam. And uh, have a good week. Say bye, Mumble, my little honey. Can you make guy. some noises for us, bud, right, to send us off? Send us off with Send us off with some noises. noises. Hell wow. yeah. <laughs> tight, tight. Wow, it's so hard <laughs> to be alive, isn't it, bud? Later, guys. Bye.